Howdy folks, Bad Mark with Mac Tech here, and today we're taking a look at Drop's new profile DCX, not MT2, DCX. Now I've got both the white on black and the black on white series today. I'm going to be taking a look at the thickness, at how well legends are printed, and how well they compare to other keycaps. Now, if you have any other questions that I do not cover in this video, please make sure to leave me a comment below. And if there's enough, I will do a follow-up video. So let's go ahead and see which one we've got here. This is the DCXB kit. Now, obviously I've already opened these to take pictures and I did take the, um, all right, here's the black on white set. Uh, all trays do come with the um, layer of bubble wrap. I had just taken the first layer off just to do some initial uh, inspections. So here we have this new profile that isn't quite cherry, isn't MT3, isn't ASA. But if I had to say, I mean, if I had to pick a profile that if I just saw this and didn't know this was not DCX, I would definitely... Um, say that this is a cherry keycap just off of just viewing it and I mean, it was gonna apologize I am going through a bit of a, a bug so I do have the sniffles uh, please excuse my sniffles today all right so I'm gonna pull out these are uh, I want to say Momoka manufactures these I could be wrong I know Keep Monkey had them made, um, but I, I want to say it was Momoka. I could be wrong. Though these are a Cherry Profile key. And I just want to, I'm not doing the full comparison. I just want to show the different profiles. So we're looking, oh, this is actually a row two. That's not a row one. But, I mean, if we look at a row two Cherry, this is a row two Cherry, and this is a row one so let's go ahead and just do the same keys. So these are both row twos. All right. So looking at the row twos, there is the slightest, slightest of difference, but it's almost imperceptible. The angle is, is slightly different too, but just almost imperceptible. Really the only real difference, I guess I would say, is the surface. And if you guys can see from this angle... Um, there seems to be just the just a little bit more surface on the DCX than there is on the Cherry key. I mean, it's almost imperceptible. All right, let me go ahead and pull out my caliper here and go ahead and take a look at these. Oh, let's not throw out the laptop. All right, so. zero it out all right so if we take one body or one side of the body we're looking at 1.48 probably 1 1.5 let's look at the other side and now we're looking at yeah, about the same 1.48 so it's probably 1.5 from my squeezing yeah it's it's 1.5 in thickness there um, now the moldings are on the inside are also slightly different. Let me see if I can get a good enough shot in there that you guys can see. There's only, see how there's only three ribs as opposed to four ribs, or in some I've only seen two. Granted, I've seen some with no ribs at all, but I know that provides some more structural support. Uh, again, I'm not a materials engineer, so, or structural engineer, it's just a little bit that I know. Um, but obviously they are double shot. Now, Another thing I wanted to touch on that I know <coughs> some people have brought up about these keys are the feel. Now, I have I have had bad PBT keycaps and I've had bad ABS keycaps. So plastic, you know, they are two different types of plastic, but a lot of it goes into the manufacturing of the plastic as well. I mean, if it's thin, you know, if it's plastic, if it's 
hollow if it feel you know if you can actually make it you know bend with your hand that's cheap it doesn't matter if it's pbt um, or abs i do understand the whole shine issue and i definitely notice it with um, wasd keys which i do love for the customization but they're only good for looks um they and for the price i mean they're just not i mean i wouldn't recommend them if you really want good keycaps because they're very thin and plastic but anyway <coughs> comparing actually i want to compare those right here let me see yep there's that key i believe these are oem but these are the wasd uh, keyboard you can go and get your own customized set you can pick the color of the keycaps as well as the color of the legends but I already put this away but I want to see I mean they're so thin that if you put these on a keyboard with LEDs you will actually be able to see through it but let me see what the thickness of these are uh, yeah that's not even one millimeter it's nine tenths yeah nine tenths of a millimeter thick so and these you can actually see how they have the four ribs but I mean you can squeeze this so if you're looking for something pretty and you want something custom they do give you like I want to say 14 or 16 colors to choose from besides black and white and no different profiles but you can choose from the colors you've got a couple of different um, options as far as the uh, the legends go but other than that i wouldn't recommend them. otherwise we're not here to discuss them we're here to discuss dcx so anyway these to me how they feel i, I like them they they're silky they they feel for a plastic they feel soft i don't know if that makes any sense not soft as in weak oh, and mind you here i, I was like I've actually felt the difference. That's what I meant. I, I had, this is the actually the timeless violet cap. When I started to do this, I realized, wait a minute, this is not the DCX. That's how unique the surface of these keycaps are. Now, again, I'm not a materials engineer, so I don't know exactly their blend, but when they first said they'd been working on this for years, I kind of chalked that up to, to marketing. But at this point, uh, I mean, they did something right, definitely, when it came to how these feel. Obviously, they're using newer moldings, so you're not going to see any of that ribbing or any of that issue you see with GMMK or GMK keycap sets. And I've only ever had one GMK set, and I no longer own it, so unfortunately, I cannot do a GMK comparison. I personally am not a big fan of GMK kits. So, now let's continue on so anyway these are very similar you know when they first named them mt2 and i'm not going to get into that whole drama over the mt3 and mateo and everything everyone knows um and if not look it up but when they first named them mt2 one not only did i think that mateo had something to do with the design but that they were just you know going to be different height of the mt3 caps which i probably i would probably if i was pressed i would say mt3 are probably one of my favorite profiles that are uh, sa or asa i love them for the retro and they do they remind me of when i was a first a kid back in the 80s typing on you know wise terminals and then you know commodores and amigas and uh, texas instrument all those uh, and then ibm pcs obviously so that's why i particularly have a preference for mt3 and those more retro type caps so cherry the cherry came along later on i don't know exact history but i remember them becoming more popular on the uh, keyboards in the mid to late 90s and i wasn't really into keyboards i just i did my work whatever i mean i could i, I didn't like touch screens as long as it had some some feedback and tactility i was fine where there's membrane or switch but i mean this was the 90s anyway so cherry came along and i was like eh. and i i did kind of lose but it was so gradual i didn't really didn't it it took me a while to realize until i actually started trying different profiles um i guess oem and cherry 
were mostly used interchangeably on a lot of uh, keycaps of those uh, those clone boards back, you know, when they were, I guess, I mean, because there were some clone boards that were mechanical, but then they started transitioning the late 90s, early aughts into the uh, membrane boards. But anyway, not here to talk about old people stuff. Gonna, again, th so these keycaps have a very nice feel to them. I mean, obviously, you know, our fingers are going to be doing the most contact with these. And I wish I could describe it, but it the closest thing I could say is silky. I remember the first time I touched silk and I was, you know, I remember hearing, oh, silk is so soft, silk is so delicate. And I was like, it's just cloth. Then I touched it and I realized what they meant. It, that was different. This is that kind of thing. I think you just have to touch it for yourself to feel it. Um, it's almost like it has, it's not slippery because it's not like your fingers want to glide. It almost, it's almost as though it has a smooth, grippy surface, if that makes any sense. I mean, that's really the best way I can describe it. Now, for the font on these, they did pick one that isn't as bold. Now, I am... A fan of bigger fonts and I prefer them to take up as much space so it's one of the reasons I'm not the biggest fan of cherry caps but we're taking that out of consideration other than that I do like the font and how they look on these keys in comparison to other keycap sets they are quite clear and obviously they're using newer molding so they're gonna you know have much better appearance because they haven't been worn they haven't pressed you know millions and millions and pieces and i'm going to assume they probably have backup molds as well so you can see that the legends are quite crisp quite clear the font has just the slightest amount of roundness to it just enough for it to not come off as a comic sans um, it's a very it's a crisp easy to read nice font that stands out and I mean, it does what legends need to do. But I cannot speak about the legends without speaking about this. <laughs> and I don't know if, if it's as noticeable to others as it is to me. It was pointed out when I first posted this. Oh, I can, I get the, there we go. All right. It was pointed out to me. And... I mean, I did some typesetting back in the day, but I am by no means a font specialist. So I don't think that this is a kerning issue, but it does seem off by like a pixel or two. That T and that F are too far apart. I mean, that may just be my opinion, but if I go ahead and... This is sand by Novel Keys. So this is a PBT keycap set that comes in cherry. Oh. So I just want to, just for comparison's sake, I'm pull out the shift out of here. Now, of course, they're not the same font. They're not the same manufacturers. So, but I want to be able to show the difference between see how the shift above the t and the f are close together they're not too close together they seem fine they seem about as close together as the rest of the letters now look at the t on the dcx doesn't it look like it's trying to run away it's too far apart from the f so this to me it's it's tough i mean we're paying a lot of money for plastic so i'm sorry if i want my plastic to be as close to perfect as possible this is almost a deal breaker for me i mean that's with as much time and effort as they spent on this why so i'm not set those down for a second now we're going to take a look at the right shift key and you see same thing 
Do you notice it? That T is too far away from the F. Now the thing is that I've taken a look at photographs on their websites for like their Dolch and other series. That doesn't seem to be the case. So I don't know if they've made a course correction and they're basically leaving those of us who took a chance and pre-ordered these out, you know, uh, to, to lunch and just leaving us with bad kidding. But I'm not particularly happy about that. I've got to say drop. I mean, I'm trying to give drop the benefit of the doubt, but if anybody from drop is watching, how did this get past QC, QA? Quality control, quality assurance. Hmm? I, I don't get that. Everything else about this is is so well made. I mean, no. where is it? I don't know if that's a piece of plastic or... Huh. So there's a... That's a white piece of plastic So because that's double shot. And it looks like, huh, that's odd. It's right near one of the arrows. wonder if that happens over here. Nope, that's not there. Now, again, the molding is, you can tell, I mean, it's brand new. But that, I mean... That's what I think of this. Anyway, so in comparison, so let's take, you know, these shift keys. This is a Cherry profile, and this is the DCX profile. Put them head to head. The DCX is only just, I mean, two tenths two tenths of a millimeter if I had to guess difference I mean it's it's ever so slight it's there but it's ever so slight so is DCX just a another name for cherry what differentiates this from cherry I'm asking the question I can't answer it I don't know but uh I mean, I know there's some slight differences, but they're just, I, in my opinion, they're too slight to even say they're a different profile. But, oh, well. I don't run a keyboard company, so this is just my opinion. All right, so I'll put sand aside. Now, I do have, let's put this box down. I also have uh, white on black. And if you're like, well, maybe that only happened with the black on white set. Nope. Sorry, but that's not the case. We have the same thing when we look at the shift keys. That T is a little too far away from that F. And I, th I think the kerning is off on this. I really do. Um, I don't have the equipment to actually do the measurements. But my eyes, in my mind, that bothers me. It, 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 it sticks out to me like a sore thumb. It sticks out quite far. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that part alone. That's up for others to decide. I am going to reach out to drop, though, and find out because like I said I see the pictures for other DCX keycap sets and that that does not seem to be an issue anymore so all right so looking further these keycap sets are fairly complete I think they're going to cover a good majority of your um, layouts out there go ahead and get rid of the extra bubble wrap of course you do have a couple I mean you got the for the uh, 
black on white, you've got a black escape and enter key, as well as numpad enter and an ISO enter. Um, let me see. I don't see the extra B in case you're using an Alice. You see a couple of different row heights for the um, navigation columns. So, and ISO, ah, two ISO keys. That's nice, but I don't see the, um, what is it, the three pound key? Huh. Yeah, I, I don't understand, I mean, how, why they do that and just, Here's an enter key, but we're going to forget about the other keys you need. I mean, there's that one. So, and they also include the uh, F and J without the um, home bar, which I guess some people have complained about little bumps on their F and J keys. <laughs> I find that uh, very amusing. Um, looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five shift keys. That's going to work practically anywhere. Um, all in one spot. And it looks like we do have a regular space bar and a 7U space bar. So, oh, yeah. This is the 7U. That's the Sang. Sangin. Sang, sangin? I can never say it right. Please, <laughs> please excuse my bad pronunciation, especially now that I have a cold. It's just not, not going to work. Sangin? Sangin. Uh, it's what the NK 87s use as the bottom row. I actually quite like it. I've become quite enamored with it. So anyway, the, the, everything else about this keycap set is really nice. But again, if I were to hand these to you and say, oh, look, I just got, you know, these new keycaps and not mention who they were, you know, like handed them to you in a cardboard box. Uh, what would you think about them? I did want to do a quick comparison. I thought I brought that kit in here, but I did one second. All right, now I am not going to. Well, I guess I am if I'm doing it. <laughs> Never mind. I am not against clones. There, I said it. So I'm. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to purchase plastic, wait for months for it, and pay hundreds of dollars for it to just perhaps get something I don't like outside of the window of when my credit card will protect me. I'm sorry, but I just, I think it's ridiculous. It, they, these are pieces of plastic. Don't get me wrong. I love these pieces of plastic. But uh, group buys, uh-uh. So here we have a clone set, which now this is, ah, uh, screw it. I'll go ahead and name them. I've bought quite a few clone sets from this manufacturer. They don't even put their name on it. But it's uh, sure if you've done any shopping on um, especially AliExpress, even on Amazon, you've come across what everybody wants to say Samsung, but it isn't. It's some GSN. So um, I don't know exactly how they pronounce that. But... Um, they have clones of some of the most more popular uh, GMK sets. And uh, they can usually be found for between $25 and $45, depending on how popular or uh, just where you find them. Um, heck, I've seen them popping up even on eBay nowadays. But after having a set, and I... Honestly, I wish I would have at least kept a couple of the GMK key, keys, but obviously when I sold it, I sold it complete. But just so that I could compare, because a lot of these actually uh, are better made than the GMKs. A lot of the, the, the GMK set that I had, um, the uh, Red Samurai, had uh, banding, like like pieces of plastic missing. It did not look like it was well made. I, I don't know if you just noticed. I just opened this. This, this I got. This is a Black Lotus clone set. Um, but, I mean, that's a double shot. Yes, you see the uh, clip. I forget the clip marks, but it's very, very hard to notice, and obviously it's on the underneath. I've seen GMKs with pock marks on the side. Um, it's just... I, 
I'm not going to waste any money with GMK, and I'm not going to spend more than $60, $70 for KeyCap. But that's me. I'm more of the budget guy, so see me. So anyway, I do like, especially from this brand, because I have seen Gleegling, their clones are not as good of quality. Um, but Sumsin, some GSN, I, like I said, Sumsin, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, their clones are quite good. I mean, honestly, I, I, I've bought a lot of them, and I quite like them. But, again, I just want to do a quick comparison. I know I'm not doing this complete justice because it's hard since I don't have a flat surface. I'm just trying to do this all in one shot. But So there's the Z from a cherry keycap set. And there's the Z from the DCX. So I'm trying to hold it this way. It's hard whichever way I hold it. It's going to be hard to see at an angle. Let me see. No, that's not going to work. Dropping them on the ground isn't going to work either. All right, so there's the front of them. Trying to put it on a flat surface so you guys can see. And there would be signs. I don't know if you can see, but it's just slightly higher. So that's all the DCX really offers in difference to Cherry is that they are the tiniest bit taller and they have a little bit more surface area on the top of the key. Um, it almost looks a little bit longer than wider on the surface area. I don't know if you can see that because this is more of a kind of a square whereas the top of this keycap is more of a rectangle. See how it's a little bit taller than the Z, than the Z on the left? So other than that, other than that extra bit of height and that difference, because I can definitely tell, I mean, don't get me wrong, this feels like regular plastic. It's not bad, but there's nothing different. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But if somebody were to grab these keys, you know, switch them around, go like this, and put them in my hands, you know, blindfolded, I'd be able to say, okay, yep, this is definitely, by touch, I can definitely tell that this is the DCX key because it feels different. Whatever formula they did, it, 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 it made a difference there. Now, again, I'd really like to know about that legend, though, that shift legend, because all the rest of the legends, as far as I can see, are fine. Um, I previously uh, did a review on the Akko, uh, I want to say the Sal, the Sal keycaps when they came out. And I was not happy with how they did. They had some of the modifier so that were in all caps and some that were um, capitalized, you know, the first letter and then regular. So it was like, wait a minute, you mixed the casing on the modifiers and I did not do a, a, a typing test and I I heard I definitely heard a negative uh, response from that so I will be doing a type test with these let me go ahead and put these away I am gonna though just do a quick comparison because I guess I'm gonna keep coming back to that now here we have oh, and this is yeah no never mind this isn't a full set, but we can uh, do what we need to. Um, <clears throat> so here we have an Akko. Uh, this is silent, I want to say. Uh, I forget the names of these keycap sets. There's so many of them. But so I'm just going to go ahead and take the shift key out. And this is one of the shorty ones. Now, obviously, there's no arrow on here. Uh, no, 
most of you folks, I would assume, are familiar with the Octo keycap sets. In my opinion, they're some of the better keycap sets, brand name keycap sets that are available in stock that are out there. Um, besides the MT3, but the MT3s are only time I'll buy MT3s are on BOGO, but that's me. So, see, here's one thing that I've got to say. Can you guys, you guys notice the difference? I mean, to me, it's glaringly obvious, but I just, I don't know. If I was, I, I've developed a lot of software products and very rarely have I been project manager. I'm usually architect or architect and developer. I hate being project manager, but we always have a QA, QC and they're outside of our process, meaning they're not around while we're, you know, doing a lot of the brainstorming and everything. They come in afterwards and they, you know, they, they have a fresh perspective on the product. So they come in without knowing anything and most of the times are able to very quickly point out, you know, flaws that because we've been working on this project for weeks or months, you know, they've just blended into the background, become background noise to us, and we haven't even noticed that, oh, wow, that is an issue because we just, it, we incorporate it into our environment. That's why QAQC steps outside and they come in and they can see things like this. Like, are you seriously going to put that out? Um, and that's where I'm just kind of, I'm kind of lost with Drop. I mean, they are obviously a company that, you know, has money. Um, I would say they're probably a bigger company than ACO, being that they've been around for longer um, and they're U.S. based. I could be wrong, but I mean, we don't have, I mean, Drop isn't, isn't public that I know of, so we don't have any of their financials. I'm sure there's some guesstimates out there. And ACO, I'm sure we don't have any estimates, but I'm sure there's some guesstimates as well based on sales. But and I have my own beef with Akko, but I'm not even going to go there here. But this is a uh, this is a nice, crisp legend. That's it's easy to read, and it doesn't sit wrong, because that T and that F are the correct distance apart. They have the proper kerning. But pick any of these. That F and that T, they're they're breaking up. They're uh, they're Splitsville. Ah, oh, come on. Hey, if you guys know of a better camera that I can get that isn't a thousand dollars, please shoot me a link. I have gone through so many cameras. This one's supposed to be a a great webcam. It's a Logitech. It's a pricey Logitech. It was like one hundred and eighty dollars. Um, but shoot me some links because I need a I need a decent um, mountable webcam, you know, that's streamable. So yeah, that's that to me is a nice legend, of course. I'm not going to. But that one, that F and T, boy, is that tough for me to get over. Anyway, I kept I keep saying I'm not going to come back to it, and I keep doing it. So anyway, those are those are the, on the Akko. This was just a quick comparison to the Akkos, which are cherry. And again, the heights of these keycaps are quite similar. The only other keycap set I have here. These are um, also, I believe. I believe these are some scent as well, some GSN. But these are an SA profile. So these are also double shot. But let's go ahead. Oh, and, and this one also has the extra B, which, I mean, come on, extra key. There's people out there with house boards. So I'll take one of the modifiers here. So, I'm going to take the shift key. I'm going to take the long shift key here. 
So this is an SA or ASA. ASA. They call it an MG. It is a little bit more sculpted than most of the SA key cams. It's actually close to an MT3, but not there. It's kind of in the middle. So we can see the height difference. And then we can also see the difference in the legends. Now, obviously, the, uh, the dark key cap has it centered. But again, same caps and that F and T look like they belong together. That F and T doesn't. Although there is a little bit more space on that one now that I'm actually noticing it. That one also seems to have a little bit of space. Huh. All right, so drop isn't the only one that's doing that. Oh, come on. See? That F and T, there's too much space between them. Too much space. So, so yeah, I found another keycap set. But for some reason, I think it's probably the case that this has that it stands out to me more. Uh, being that this is all uppercase, it did not stand out to me. I did not notice that until just now. So. All right, so that was just an overview of the materials. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop both of these on to some keyboards and do some sound test so you guys can get an idea of what these keycaps sound like because like I said I'm not gonna we'll not be doing any keycap reviews without doing a sound test here from here on out I learned my lesson so what I've done in order to try and do a fair sound comparison tried to pick the one I believe are some of the more popular switches out there. Now, I have two Tester 68s. Actually, this is a KBM 68, but as we know, they're all the same. Uh, these are loaded with NK creams, and these are lubricated. So I'm, this is a stock board except for the stabilizers. All I've done is um, plumber's mod to the stabilizers, and I did put some foam in here. Other than that, there's nothing else. This is stock. This is another board. I had uh, added some uh, foam into it. I took that out, so this is basically stock as well. And it does not have... I should have actually grabbed some foam for there, but it doesn't have foam. This is uh, the CIY version. It's obviously the more transparent. And in this one, I put put Akko um, Lavenders, which are a tactile. So I'm going to go ahead and try the black on the black keyboard and the white on the white keyboard. So white's going to be linear on the, uh, the cream switches, on the novel key uh, cream, not box, but original creams. And the white on black is gonna be <laughs> on the uh, Akko Lavender, Lavender tactile switches. I'm sorry, my, my throat is screwing up. So let me go ahead and load these caps onto this board, or these boards, and then uh, we'll get to a sound test. How about that? <laughs> 